Newton's first law states that an object that is subject to no external force will maintain its current state of motion. A uh, common phrasing of that is, an object at rest tends to stay at rest, an object already in motion tends to stay in motion. For instance, here's a collection of objects currently at rest. As long as nothing comes from the outside to push on them, then they should stay at rest. Uh, here's a classic demonstration of that fact. Now, there are some complications. Uh, for instance, what about gravity? There is an outside pull of gravity on this glass of liquid. Uh, gravity pulls the glass downward. Um, but also, the glass is being supported from below by the table. Well, technically, with a piece of paper in there, it's the paper that pushes upward on the bottom of the glass. But the paper, in turn, is supported by the table, so the table is pushing up on the paper. Of course, perhaps, ultimately, the table is held up by the floor, which is held up by the ground, which, and so on. But uh, bottom line is, whatever surface the glass is resting on, there's a force of support from below. That force is uh, opposite to and just as big as gravity. So we, we have actually a pair of forces, same size but opposite directions. The total effect of those together is zero, as if there was, if they cancel each other out as if there's no force there at all. And so actually we haven't violated the, the, the fine print here of, of Newton's first law. Now, before you try this with anything too, uh, too messy or expensive, there is one more subtle issue. The, the piece of paper here uh, is touching the, the bottom of these objects, and as it slides out, there can be a, a small force of friction. Uh, friction is a force that tends to oppose you know, one object sliding across another object. So as this paper is removed, there's a small frictional force there. Uh, it's fairly small, and if you pull the paper quite rapidly, it's not going to last very long. So uh, the effects are fairly small for, for most objects. So there are some tricks to keep in mind. Certainly slick surfaces are good, as that will keep the friction down. But the main thing is just to make sure the paper is removed very, very rapidly. You know, pull too slow, and even that small force of friction is going to be plenty to carry the objects along with it. Uh, one thing to, to help even more is I usually I let the paper go a little bit a little bit slack before I start pulling. That way, by the time I get to the paper being taut, I'm already in motion, and the acceleration phase for the paper slipping out is just is even shorter. It's just a very short period of time that the paper is actually sliding across the objects. So there are limits to this particular demonstration. If your objects are too feather light, like these little pieces of uh, tissue paper, uh, hardly any force at all is required to get them moving, so it's pretty well impossible to <laughs> do the same thing with those.